Welcome to the Math Rebbe, everyone. I'm your host, Daniel. I apologize for not airing this a few weeks ago. I've been having some technical difficulties that seem to have resolved themselves. After last episode, when we looked at the Mishkan itself, today we're going to go inside and take a look at some of the Kalim of the Mishkan, and then also those of the base of Mikdash. <laughs> Actually, we're going to be looking at the Kalim of the Beis Hamikdash first. If you recall from episode two, when we discussed the derivation of pi equals three from the Yamsha Shlomo, we mentioned that its diameter was ten amos and its height was five amos. The Gemara there continued, saying that it could contain 150 mikvaos, a number the pasuk describes as 2,000 bas. As an aside, this is most likely where we get the English word bath from. But hold on a second. One mikvah is just big enough to hold one person, three amos tall, one amma wide, and one amma deep. This is 40 saw of water. You know, I kind of feel bad for the guy in that mikvah. I don't think he's coming out anytime soon. The Yom Shoshlomo was 10 by 10 by 5 amos, or 500 cubic amos. 150 mikvos, though is 150 times 3 by 1 by 1 amos, which is only 450 cubic amos. So what if the Amsha Shlomo was round? Would that make a difference? Actually, it would make things worse. Now the volume is pi times the radius squared times the height. Rounding pi at 3, this is 3 times 5 squared times 10, or 750 cubic amos. It must be, then, that only part of it was round and part of it was square. The square part at the bottom was 3 amos, which is a volume of 300 cubic amos. The round part at the top was 2 amos tall, which is a volume in total of 450 cubic amos. Now back to the Mishkan. Most people, when discussing the Mizbeach HaKetores, ask why it's placed in Tetzaveh instead of Truma like the rest of the Kalim. The Shari Iron has a different question. The poles for the Mizbeach HaZahav were placed on the corners. The Aron, the Shochan, and the Aron Mizbeach all had their bottom on the sides. Why was the Mizbeach HaZahav different? Yes, I totally used Minecraft's dirt texture for the dirt Mizbeach. There is a dispute in the Gemara regarding whether the Levium stood on the outside of the Kalim and four people held each Kli, or if there were just two Levium who each held both poles. If you will notice, the Mizbeach HaKetores was one square amma. Since a person is an amma wide, he couldn't possibly stand in that gap according to the latter opinion. Putting the poles on the diagonal, though, gives another 0.4 amos to play with, and a person could indeed stand in such a gap of 1.4 amos wide. Now comes the fun part. There was a challenge flowing around the internet at one point to calculate the weight of the arm to underscore the nace recorded in the Yalkuts that the arm was no CS no sub that carried those who ostensibly carried it. Of course, a math video about the Kalim of the Mishkan had to take up that challenge. In my calculations, I don't take into account the contents of the arm, nor do I take into account that according to Rabbi Huda, there is a shelf on the outside of the arm. I also don't take into account that some of my calculations leave certain pieces of gold counted twice and others not counted at all, but my numbers are so rough it doesn't really make that big of a difference. What I did take into account, though, is the Gemara and Bava Basra, which says that according to Rabbi Meir, who holds the Aron used a six tefach Amma, the Aron looked drastically different than Rabbi Huda's view, in which the Amma referred to only had five tefachim. Let me get out my laser pointer for this. The urn consisted of three boxes, one of wood, surrounded by a gold box, and surrounding a second gold box. According to Rabbi Meir, the wood box would be 9 by 9 by 15 tzvachim, less the empty space inside, yielding 203.5 cubic tzvachim. A similar calculation for Rabbi Huda yields only 98.66 cubic tzvachim. The gold boxes were 89.83 cubic tzvachim, and 75.64 cubic tefachim, respectively, according to Rebbe Meir, and 62.67 cubic tefachim, and 53.22 cubic tefachim, respectively, according to Rebbe Huda. 
Note that the wooden box is larger than either of these numbers according to either opinion. That is not a mistake. Also notice that it's thicker than either gold box. According to Rabbi Meir, the wood box is a tefach thick, while the gold boxes were each a quarter tefach thick. And according to Rabbi Huda, the wood box is still a tefach thick, while the gold boxes are half a tefach thick each. The kapores, the lid for the aron, is 135 cubic tefachim, according to Rabbi Meir, and 93.75 cubic tefachim, according to Rabbi Huda. The aron also had a zer, a crown. According to Rebbe Meir, it took up approximately three cubic tefachim, while according to Rebbe Huda, it took up only two and a half cubic tefachim. Although the Gemara in Sukkah says that the zer was only a tiny bit thick, I couldn't multiply the numbers by infin- infinitesimal, and so I rounded up to an etzba. Like I said, my numbers are extremely rough. Attached to the kaporas are the kruvim. As mentioned earlier, life-size people are one by one by three amos. The kruvim stood ten tefachim tall. Thus, proportionally, their length and width are 0.56 tefachim each, according to Rebbe Meir, and 0.67 tefachim, according to Rebbe Yehuda. Since their wings covered the aron, together they had an area of roughly 9 by 15 tefachim, according to Rebbe Meir, and 7.5 by 12.5 tefachim, according to Rebbe Yehuda. Thus, overall, the Kruvim had a volume of 40.02 cubic tefachim, according to Rebbe Meir, and 32.42 cubic tefachim, according to Rebbe Yehuda. The rings to hold the poles for the aron were located on each corner of the aron. The volume of a donut, the yummiest shape in math, is three times pi, the yummiest number in math, times the square of the minor radius, which is halfway across the circle co- oh, cross section, times the major radius, which is the distance from the center of the donut to the center of the circle cross section. Thus, according to Rebbe Meir, the volume of all four tabos combined is 0.19 cubic tefachim, and according to Rebbe Huda, the volume is exactly the same. For once, Rebbe Meir and Rebbe Huda agree on how big something is. The poles that went into the rings were 10 amos long, one tefach in diameter. They were slightly bigger on their ends such that once they were forced into the rings, they couldn't slip out with being, without being forced out. But like I said, this thing is massive as it is. I'm still using rough numbers. According to Rebbe Meir, they had a volume of 90 cubic tefachim combined, and Rebbe Huda had a slightly smaller volume of 75 cubic tefachim. These poles, of course, were played in gold. Once again, both Rebbe Meir and Rebbe Huda agreed that it was 0.75 cubic tefachim in volume between the two poles. Overall, Rebbe Meir holds that there was 344.43 cubic tefachim of gold, and 293.5 cubic tefachim of wood, while Rebbe Huda holds there was 245.5 cubic tefachim of gold and 173.66 cubic tefachim of wood. Now we figure out how heavy this thing is. As we just said, Rebbe holds that there are 344.43 cubic tefachim of gold, using Rav Meish's figure of 751.83 cubic centimeters per cubic tefach, and the density of gold being 19.32 grams per cubic centimeter, it comes out that just the gold, that's just the gold, weighed over 5,000 kilograms. He also holds that there are 293.5 cubic tefachim of wood. Once again, there are 751.83 cubic centimeters per cubic tefach. The density of wood, specifically cedar wood, is 0.58 grams per cubic centimeter. Thus, according to Rebbe Meir, the wood weighed just under 130 kilograms. Overall, that means the Aron weighs 5,130.95 kilograms, according to Rebbe Meir. Rebbe Huda held there are 245.5 cubic tefachim of gold. Going through the same conversions as before, we arrive at a weight of 3,565.97 kilograms of gold. Multiplying Rebbe Huda's 173.66 cubic tefachim of cedar wood per cubic centimeter by Rav Meish's conversion and the density of cedar woods, that gives us a total of 75.73 kilograms which gives a total of 3,641.7 kilograms. 
The average male can deadlift around 70 kilograms untrained and 131 kil un and a half kilograms trained. Even if we assume that all the Levium were trained weightlifters, and even if we go according to the aforementioned view that four Levium held each cle, that's still only 526 kilograms across the four of them, not even a quarter of the total weight of the Aron, even according to the lesser weight of Reb Yehuda. Phew. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, and comment if you did. This week, I'm going to be posting the rest of the videos for the season, so we'll be discussing all sorts of math-related comments.